My name is Bob, and I have tool acquisition syndrome, and I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> Today I'm going to reveal one of the most overpriced and unnecessary tools in my shop, and then I'm going to show you why it was worth every penny. Welcome everyone, I'm Bob Oldman, and if you want to continue to up your knife making game, hit that subscribe button. This channel will always be dedicated to providing useful information that will help knife makers of all levels improve their skills and their knives. Alright, so let's stop wasting time. This is the servo micro drill. Now I know you're thinking, it's just a small drill press. But bear with me, and I think you'll see it's a little more than that. Let's talk specs. Spindle speed ranges from 200 to 20,000 RPM. Spindle runout is less than 0.0002 inch. That is less than two ten thousandths of an inch. These babies are available with a 12 inch or a 19 inch column and they have a precision ground base. My drill is equipped with an eighth inch Albrecht keyless chuck and these things are also available with a WW Collet spindle. Right, so the spindle speed and ridiculously low runout make this thing fantastic. But the feature that really pushes this drill into the stratosphere is the micro depth stop. What's maybe not so readily apparent is this little dial here. This is the depth stop adjuster and it's linked to the dial indicator. The slick thing about this knob is that it allows you to set a very accurate depth stop by turning it one way or by turning it the opposite direction you can hold the spindle in the down position with the same level of accuracy. Let's go through a few of the ways I use this drill. First thing I want to point out is that I use 123 blocks a lot in my shop. They're relatively inexpensive and provide a precision surface to work from. So the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is how I jewel liners on the servo mini drill. Mounted up is a quarter inch Kratex abrasive drum. If you're not familiar with Kratex abrasives, they come in lots of different sizes and shapes. I buy these drums in bulk and they have a little, this will not focus, uh, but they have a little hole that goes onto the mandrel here and you just thread them on. And these are quarter inch diameter short drums. I keep the feed fairly, fairly low on this, usually around 2000 RPM. There's no depth stop adjustment needed for this, but in order to keep things moving along quickly, I adjust the down feed handle to keep my right hand in a comfortable position. So pretty straightforward, gives a nice pattern. Next, let's check out some plain old hole punching. So on these holes, I'm using a number 66 drill, which equals about 33 thousandths diameter, and they're gonna go into mother of pearl. These are pretty high quality carbide drills from MA Ford, and I run them at fairly high speed, around 15,000 RPM. And I'm going to adjust the handle here. And we'll try to set this over. Notice that even at 12 to 15,000 RPM, I have to peck drill these holes to clear the flutes on this tiny twist drill. All right, in this setup, I'm using a small jeweler's stone on an eighth inch arbor. These came from Guesswin, but I think they're now discontinued 
and have been replaced with 3 32nd shank stones. They'll still work in a, in a drill like this, but you just have to be careful, a little bit more careful not to push too hard. You don't want to bend the, uh, the shank of the stone. And I run these at pretty high speed, and of all the different methods I've tried for cleaning up the tang area on folder blades, this is by far the best. And this is where using the, uh, the stop comes in really handy. So I can, uh, I can turn this down right here. Okay, so I'm touching the one, two, three block. I'll back it off just a little bit. And then I'll come down another 50 thousandths or 100 thousandths and make sure that the bottom edge is below the surface of the stone and it's held in place. So now when I fire this up, I can come in here and just clean up the tang area on my folder using this stone. All right, so for this last setup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to, uh, how to do some threading on a fixed blade guard insert. So if you don't know what threading is, threading is basically a, a thin line cut into the material. And this is just, uh, this was an extra piece that became scrap from a project. But I want to put a, I want to put a thin cut all the way around right in the middle of this. So what I'm going to do, I've already done the math and I figured out that I need this cutoff wheel, which is about 30 thousandths thick, to be 74 thousandths off the block. So I'm just going to turn this down until I just start to feel a little friction pulling against this gauge pin. And that's about right there. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my piece on the one, two, three block, and I'm just going to let this cut into the piece. And then I'm going to flip it over because I want to make sure my line is right in the center. And that's it. You can see it gives me a nice clean line. Now this is a great guide if I want to cut a flute. I can put that in a, I can put this into a vise now and follow it with a round file and it'll stay right in that little groove. Or I can use a thinner disc. Um, I have discs as thin as nine thousandths and I can just cut a nice clean line and that'd be it. That'd be the decorative element. Check out the threading and fluting on these meteorite bolsters. Right, so that was a pretty good introduction to the uh, servo micro drill. To be honest, I find new uses for it all the time. The operations I showed you today are just common operations that I use it for frequently, but honestly, your imagination is uh, your only limit. This definitely is not a must have in the shop. This is a very nice to have item, and I had ways of doing all the tasks that I showed you today on other equipment before I bought this machine a couple years ago. Okay, so let me just say a few words about buying one of these things. First off, unless you're independently wealthy knife maker, 
you really probably shouldn't buy one new. I believe these things go for about $2,300 off of Servo's website. So your best bet is to find one used. eBay, Craigslist, uh, probably the best places to look for them. I bought mine about three years ago off of eBay. And I believe all in with shipping was about $800. So there you go. One badass piece of knife making kit and a little more insight into my knife making processes. As always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I do try to answer all questions. I've got pages of subject ideas for these videos. And honestly, if you guys have got something you want to see me do, put it in the comments section below. Until next time, stay safe out there. I'm Bob Olman, and this is Ranger Made Knives. Out.